Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to easily install Android 10 TV on your Raspberry Pi 4. Now keep in mind this is in beta. You will run into a few issues here and there. Overall, the main issues that I've had is sound isn't working over HDMI and the built-in Google Play Store isn't working, but I've sideloaded separate markets like Aptoid and I can install apps from there. But the best thing about this build of Android 10 for the Raspberry Pi 4 is we have hardware acceleration or GPU acceleration as you can see here in IDA64. So performance here is actually really good for an Android build on the Raspberry Pi. I recently posted a video showing off some performance so definitely check that out. But if you're interested in installing this, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be installing this to a micro SD card using a Windows PC, but this will work on other operating systems as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this version of Android installed to our SD card for a Raspberry Pi 4. Before we get started, I do want to mention that all links in this video will be in the description, along with a kind of a little text file here. This is going to disable overscan for us, and we can also overclock our Pi 4 while we're running Android. Now obviously I'm using Windows 10 here, but this will also work with Mac or Linux. The first thing we need to do is head over to Lemoncrest and grab the image. We can download it right here. Like I said, all links will be in the description. Next thing we'll need to download is an application to allow us to flash that image to an SD card. I recommend Etcher, and this works with Mac, Linux, or Windows. I'm going to go with the Windows Portable version. I would recommend downloading WinRAR if you don't have any extraction software installed on your PC. I'm going with the 64-bit version. And the last thing we're going to need here is Notepad++ because we don't want to edit anything on our micro SD card with the built-in Notepad editor because there's a chance you could corrupt it and I recommend using Notepad++. As soon as everything's finished downloading here, I'm going to place it all on my desktop for easy access. Okay, so we have everything downloaded. Let's go ahead and install WinRAR first. Really easy to do. Give you a quick walkthrough. When RAR is now installed, we're going to go ahead and install Notepad++. I definitely recommend using this. You can try the built-in Notepad if you want to, but there's a chance you could corrupt the SD card. And finally, we need to extract the Android image that we just downloaded. So we've installed WinRAR. Right-click. Extract. It's going to extract to a folder here. Just give it some time to finish up. So we now have the Android image extracted. We're just going to take a look in here. It's a disk image file, and it's 15 gigabytes. Now it's time to flash the image. So we're going to go ahead and launch Etcher. From within Etcher, we're going to choose Flash from File. We're going to locate the Android image that we just extracted. Disk image file. We're going to select our target. This is going to be our micro SD card. Make sure you choose your SD card. And finally, choose Flash. Now this is going to take a little while, just give it some time to finish up. We're actually almost done here, but there's a few little settings that we need to change in the config file on the SD card once it's finished. Okay, so when Etcher is finished flashing the SD card, we're going to close Etcher down. And usually what I do is just pull my SD card out of my PC real quick and put it right back in. We're now going to locate that SD card. And there's a couple partitions on here, but mine is actually listed as USB Drive G. And when you see a config.txt inside of one of these drives here, you know you're in the right place. So we're going to right click on the config.txt and edit with Notepad++. I'm going to snap this over to the right hand side. And I'm just going to open up my little text document here. Now in order to get HDMI and overscan working correctly, we will need this. HDMI ignore EDID and disable underscore overscan equals one. So we're going to copy, come over to Notepad++. I go down a few lines and I'm going to paste this right in here. And if you'd like to overclock, I also have that option here, but remember you will need sufficient cooling for your Raspberry Pi. We're going to go to two gigahertz on the CPU and 700 megahertz on the GPU. So we're going to copy this, paste it right in here, file, save, and we're going to close Notepad++ down. And we're now done. We can actually remove our SD card from our PC, move over to our Raspberry Pi, plug everything in, and boot it up for the first time. Okay, so I have everything set up on my Raspberry Pi 4. I've got my monitor connected, keyboard connected, and I'm also using a single speaker because like I mentioned at the beginning, HDMI sound isn't working. I'm going to put my freshly flashed SD card in my Pi, plug in the power, and just let it boot. 
Once you see the Android logo, you know everything's going fine. I'm going to grab my keyboard here so I can navigate the operating system. We do need to change the language if you don't want it to be in Spanish, and it's pretty easy to do. You're just going to use the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate the interface here. Press Enter to access the app you want to launch, and we're going to go down here to Settings. And it doesn't say Settings right now, but trust me, this is your Settings option. We're going to go all the way down to the very bottom, which is Device Preferences, and the third option is going to be our language. Find your language. I'm going with English, United States. Make sure it's selected. Press Escape to go back. And now you should be able to read everything in your native language. So I'm going to go to my network and just connect to one of my networks here. And now you can just start using Android on your Raspberry Pi 4. There are some pre-installed apps like RetroArch, PPSSPP, F-Droid, and Firefox. Like I mentioned at the beginning, Google Play has an issue right now, so I would recommend opening up Firefox and downloading Aptoid or another app market. And that's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you get Android TV up and running on your Raspberry Pi 4. Keep in mind this is in beta. You will run into issues, but keep checking back on the Lemoncrest website for updates. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.